Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, so today we are talking about leadership. Um, I just felt like uh, after you know praying to God and um, seeking answers in His Word and just different things I've been going through personally, um, whether it be present time or things that I've gone through in the past, I just thought that it'd be cool to just make this video as a source of encouragement for those of you who are also in leadership positions. Um, it does get lonely at the top uh, sometimes, and, and so I just wanted to offer this as a source of encouragement for those of you who may be struggling um, in your role as leader. I've gone through it, and so I'll share a little bit about that um, later on in this video, but um, so I'll just pray, and then we can jump right into it. So if you don't mind, just bow your head and praying with me. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to pray to you. And we just thank you for waking us up this morning, allowing us to feel this cool Florida breeze. Um, I just thank you for allowing us the opportunity to even be uh, called a servant, uh, to even be a part of your family and to love others and to help grow them spiritually as we grow and mature uh, spiritually. I pray uh, for all those who are watching this, God, that something that I say will be able to prick their hearts and either convict them or encourage them, challenge, convict, and change our hearts to grow more into your likeness, God. I pray that this will be an edifying time for us to all grow and to recenter our lives on you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, leadership is it's great. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I have been blessed with the amazing opportunity to be a resident assistant or an RA here at Word of Life, and uh, it's been amazing. Um, there are definitely days where you question why you're here or, or what God is doing in your life when you when you face different things, but I I am so thankful for the opportunity. It's been such a great um, ride so far. Oh my gosh, there's a bug on my face. Sorry. Um, but it's been such a great ride so far. And I am truly humbled and um, thankful for God allowing me to be able to serve in this way. Um, but I wanted to read a passage of scripture to you all. Um, one of a few that I'll probably read to you guys. Um, it's in Titus. It is um, chapter 2 and 3. And chapter 2 says this. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderous or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation of all peoples. Oh my gosh, do you leave? <laughs> Sorry guys, I just washed my hair, so I'm pretty sure that they love my hair right now. Conditioner is great. Um, but anyways, um, chapter 2, verse 11. Um, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. Um, and then I'll drop down to chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. It says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and show respect to to show courteous toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hated one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might be come heirs according to hope of eternal life. Um, so I'm just going to stop there and just kind of share a little bit about what, what that passage is saying. Um, 
I'm sorry, it is a lot, and it's kind of windy, so I apologize if you're not able to hear me as clearly as I'd like for you to. Um, but that passage is so heavy for me. Um, I just feel like um, as leaders, we do have a responsibility and an account that we have to share uh, before God when Judgment Day comes. We do have to give an account of how well we led with what God has given us. And so no matter how small the position is, um, we should take this passage seriously and apply that. Um, in Colossians chapter 3, it talks about um, working as if working for the Lord. And so in everything we do, we are working for God. And we do have a responsibility as leaders to to do that, to um, share. Share God's goodness and his grace and his mercy to those, but also in a way that provides correction and encouragement um, to turn away from things that may not be pleasing to God. And so um, a lot of times when we give correction or if we um, we are trying to uphold the rules that we're enforcing from the authorities above us, it can come off to others in a way that's not necessarily um, malicious by any means, but um, just knowing that there are people who struggle with leadership issues. Um, some people may have been the person who wanted that same position you got um, and weren't chosen, or um, they feel like they have things to offer that maybe, and they do, and everyone has equal ability, um, but maybe there's something that they feel like they could have really brought to the table and they feel like they were looked over, or for whatever reason, there are people who are hostile towards you, and it may not be that they're hostile towards you because of you yourself, but just because of the title that you hold. Um, some people have had very bad experiences with leadership in the past, and, and so it can be hard for those those individuals to look past that or to even accept that maybe the person that is leading them is younger than them or um, they might not seem as mature as them, but whatever the case may be, God has put you in that position for a reason, and so never doubt that God has uniquely chosen you to be the person to lead them this year or um, this season in your life, wherever you are in leadership, um, God is sovereign and so whoever he put in leadership if that's you then he put you there for a reason and so um be encouraged in that and and understand that this passage is waiting for us we do have a responsibility to not only grow ourselves spiritually through the holy spirit but to encourage others who are under us in leadership to grow um alongside of us and so i just wanted to share that um as the weightier part of what i'm going to talk about today is just knowing that and leadership is not about giving people rules all the time. Um, yeah, there will be times where you have to discipline or have um, confrontation in the sense of, you know, kind of directing someone in a different way. But the goal is is reconciliation. Ultimately, as, as a body of Christ, um, we seek harmony and we want to um, show and model restoration but more importantly we want to teach obedience to the word of god because as a believer that is our foundation that's our final authority and so we should be pointing people back to christ and whenever we see things that may not be pleasing to him our goal isn't to make many converts of ourselves but to point people back to the gospel and to show them that hey you know this is a, a rule that we have here at this institution or um in this building or in this in this workplace but more importantly like this is uh, our responsibility as a believer of God to honor his word more, first and foremost, you know what I mean? And so um, I just wanted to share that passage to you guys and, and, and encourage you with that and knowing that if you were chosen and sometimes you doubt why you were chosen, just know that God is sovereign and that he chose you because he saw something in you that was worthy of I don't want to use the word worthy. I feel like that's a little much, but he felt like you in this moment and season in your life were capable of being led through his spirit to lead others. And so um, take that with honor and, and don't abuse the privilege of being a leader to someone else because they are watching you. Um, it is very lonely on the top. If you haven't <laughs> figured that out wherever you are yet, it can be very lonely. Um, an experience I'm going through personally right now um, that I, w I wanted to share just briefly about without without going into too much detail, um, but it, it can be very hard um, being in leadership, especially over people who are similar in age or um, or even older than you. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I served a little bit in the military, and, and even beyond that, I have parents who are very strict in terms of discipline, and we are on time, like early is on time, and you hold yourself a certain way because there are people, whether we want to admit it or not, who do see you differently. Um, based on whatever reasons and I won't go too deep into that but there are there's a certain expectation that was given to me growing up and so um and even in the jobs that I've had in the past like punctuality and discipline were things that were necessary to be 
to be successful, excuse me. And so, um, to be anything other than that, to be anything other than the best that you could be, was seen as a failing almost. Um, my parents weren't that strict to where they said I was a failure or anything. I love my parents, they're great. But um, in the sense that you work hard and there's nothing wrong with a pro- uh, with working hard for the Lord or um, having pride in the things that you do. Um, and so that is kind of where a lot of my discipline has come from growing up. Um, just having a busy schedule all the time, you had to keep up with a planner, you had to keep up with certain things. And so coming to this new environment where it's a little foreign to some students, um, it can be a little challenging um, to be that person who was brought up that way. Um, I've heard people, uh, maybe they didn't know I was in the room or not, but um, I give them the benefit of the doubt that they didn't know I was there. And they, they made comments about the way that I lead or the way that they perceive me to lead um, and saying that, you know, I'm probably the worst RA, and, you know, my girls have it the worst, I probably write them up for everything, and mind you, I've, I think I might have write, written one person up, <laughs> but, you know, those are things that I'm hearing about myself, and I'm just sitting here wondering, like, wow, is this really how people see me, and it's really sad, it's, it, it was kind of dis- discouraging today when I heard comments like that, or if I walk in a room, and it's not even just about me, but, uh, you know, there's a group that is kind of clumping all of the RAs together and saying things like that. It's, it's discouraging, one, because a lot of times they've never gotten a chance to hear my background or hear the other RAs' background and hear why we lead the way we lead. But more importantly, they don't understand that, above all, we have a responsibility to God to lead well. And so while it may not feel great to have to confront someone on something it is a part of our job not just because of the title but because of who we have to give an account to the higher authority we have to give an account to and so it can be a little challenging when um people who you really want to build relationships with um kind of don't want to just because they feel like you're the police or you know you're the you're the bad guy who's coming to ruin their fun and um so for any of you who are dealing with that kind of thing, I would just encourage you and just knowing that, you know, your labor isn't in vain and that God honors those who are righteous um, and those who are holding others to that expectation of being righteous. And as a body of believers, that is what we're called to do. We are called to hold each other up and bear one another's burdens and, and to sharpen each other like iron sharpens iron. We know these scriptures. We've, we've heard it our whole lives. But this is what this is the time where it is put to the test where you really have to say, hey, you know what? I really do want to have fun with you and I really want to build a relationship with you. But we have to do it in a way that's honoring to God because I'm not I'm, I can't personally sit here and allow you to sin um, and, and before our God. You know what I mean? And, and I would hope that people will feel comfortable enough with those who are in leadership over them to come to them. And if there's anything that I'm doing wrong or if anything else that someone else is doing wrong in leadership that you feel comfortable enough to come and talk to them about that um, and hold us accountable as well. And so, and that's just a little bit about me. I, I lead with the intent of leading by example and, and showing people that, yes, I will be the person to uphold the rules, but it's not just about the rules. It's the message behind it, you know, and the heart behind it is we're here to serve God and we're here to learn about God. And, and so my intent will always be to bring you back to the cross. And I pray that, you know, those who are near me who would, would be willing to do the same for me if they ever see me stepping out of line. And so um, that's a little bit about that. I just I just really feel like we have to band together as a, a body of believers and to really encourage the top. And so um, what I, I, I really want to um, express in this video, the point of this video isn't to, you know, just talk about my life and how horrible life is. Because, like, honestly, my life is great. I can't complain about anything. But just realizing that it is hard and it will be hard. And there will be days where, honestly, you feel like everyone hates you. It's okay. Um, Jesus was hated. And, you know, he was humble. And, and that's one thing I want to make sure that I, I definitely don't leave without saying is to be humble. Um, I had a friend Kelly back a few years back and her little saying was to be someone with humble swag. And so that's something I'm kind of stealing from her. So shout out to Kelly. Um, but just have humble swag about the way you do things. Like it's cool to be confident. It's cool to, you know, stand on the word of God, but be humble, you know, um, and be willing to serve and help other people who may be struggling in that area. Um, I'll go a little deeper into everything that I'm talking about and all that in the actual writing of this blog post, but I really just wanted to um, pray with you guys and encourage you because it's hard. It's so lonely sometimes, and it can be 
I mean, I don't know anyone who doesn't want to make friends, um, or who doesn't want to be liked by anyone, or who wants to be known as the mean person. And so, if you're dealing with that, I would encourage you to find someone, to try and find someone you can talk to about it, and to encourage you, and to also write down your prayers and your thoughts. Um, a good habit I've gotten into the habit of um, the last few weeks is writing down my thoughts, negative or positive, in a thought journal. Um, so, if for any reason there's a negative thought that comes in my head about someone or I just perceive them to be one of those people who does see me negatively and I have a negative thought comes to my head I write it down and I combat that negative thought with positivity and truth from the Word of God and um, you'll be amazed with how little that is but how much of an impact it makes on your life uh, when it comes to just combating negative thinking that that creeps in so subtly and it really can make us think negative negatively about people um, without even knowing it. And, and as a leader, those are things that you, you really can't do. Um, James talks about showing partiality. And so as a leader, you kind of have to be a, not kind of, you absolutely have to be in a position where you are above reproach. And while we aren't perfect, we have to be able to set the example and say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to think negative negatively about um, this one person because I know they hate me or I know that they treat me one way. But instead, encourage and combat negativity with positivity. If there, you know there's someone who may have a misunderstanding about who you are, invite them to eat with you at lunch. Actually, there's someone who I really want to get to know better here. And I'm going to invite them to lunch with me one day. I'm just going to sit with them. And I'm like, hey, you know what? We don't really talk much, but I want to get to know you. And so that I can show myself friendly because you to be a friend you have to show yourself friendly um but more importantly just to um come alongside them and be someone who, who can grow with them and and maybe we'll be able to actually become friends and even if we don't it's not a matter of trying to win people over by being friendly but more so just uh just loving them despite how they may feel about you because whether or not someone responds a certain way or reacts a certain way to us, we have a responsibility as leaders to respond in love regardless. And so um, with that, I, I just want to pray with you guys. And then um, feel free to read the rest of this blog. Uh, I pray that it, it helps you in some way. Um, there is another blog post coming up um, in a few hours once I write it um, about um, the other side of this coin, which would be um, leading from behind um, or leading in the background and the biblical way of leading even if you're not in a position of leadership um, because I think sometimes we can kind of get off track a little bit with our intentions and and Satan's so crafty and coming in and using temptation and sin and things that are already in our flesh and blowing out of proportion and and so I want to make sure that I, I cover that that issue and so I pray that this encourages you guys I'm human I'm letting you know I'm human I make mistakes and so um just know that I'm here battling with you praying with you all um, and I pray that you guys pray for me too, because um, it can be it can be hard as a leader, and um, and I understand that God understands that, and He's giving you this amazing opportunity to grow. Um, so use it well, um, lead well, suffer well um, if you are suffering, and enjoy the little moments because there will be a day where you'll be no longer in leadership and you'll have to go under someone, and so it'd be cool to be able to learn those lessons now so that you can encourage them in their role as leaders, but also. Be that person to help your your fellow um, employees or coworkers or whatever um, to have an attitude that is one that would be encouraging and uplifting to those who are over you. Um, so yeah, so let's pray real quick. Um, Heavenly Father, I thank you one more one more time. Just I, you can never thank you enough, but I just thank you for um, allowing us to to look a little bit into your word. Obviously, this is by no means covering all of the scripture that that you have for us about leadership or or ways to encourage leaders but i thank you for putting this passage on my heart to share um i pray for all of those who are in leadership god i pray that you'll give them boldness to continue to stand on your word and to never default from that um continue to stand confidently in the word that you've given us in our hearts and to to help other people who are under them to grow more into your likeness god if there are people in their work area who aren't saved god i pray that you will soften their hearts and make them receptive to receiving your gospel i pray that you will provide opportunities for those leaders to to share the gospel with them in due time god i pray that they will be examples of your life and, and of your love to those co-workers and they they wonder what's different about that person to um to make sure that those leaders are those who are um, rightly demonstrating who you are and sharing your testimony rightly, God. I pray for those of us who are in leadership, with those who are over us or 
are older than us and those who are younger than us, God, I pray that you'll continue to strengthen and encourage us when we sometimes feel like um, the bad guy or the kid that's left out or, um, you know, we just we just get so negative and we start to fall into a cycle of self-condemnation where we just think that we're not good enough. And, and God, I pray that you will continue to, to guide us through your word. And if there's areas in our lives that we need to correct so that we can be more um, useful to you in these moments, God, I pray that you will, you would bring them to light so that we can grow in them through your Holy Spirit, God. Um, bless this time. Bless um, all of them as they go back to their lives and as they go through their weeks as leaders. God, I pray that you will continue to bring other leaders around them who can help and strengthen them as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys. Um, so that's that's all I have for right now. Um, be sure to check out the blog post. Um, it's called Soul Searching. Um, this is soulsearching.wordpress.com. And you can check out other... Um, videos or testimonies different stories i'm going through it's just a christian girl trying to share her walk as uh, she grows closer to the lord and so um i pray that this was edifying for you all so all right see you later